Now it's my pleasure to introduce our new general manager, Joe Diglio. He gives his first uh, annual meeting report today. And, and Mark didn't mean when he said his last CFO <laughs> position that he was short term here. It's that he was our former, for those of you who don't know, he was our former CFO. He was elevated to the general manager's position last July. Help me welcome Joe. Well, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad Ken cleared that up. I was a little concerned about Mark's comment. <laughs> you know, I must say, um, this is a different experience for me. Uh, the last 23 years I've spent uh, sitting out there with you folks, uh, listening to other people present, uh, mainly a uh, uh, pretty uh, a, a strong observer of the Treasurer's Report, whether it was uh, Velmer Green or Mark Helbert reporting, and I got to tell you, some of my most anxious moments back then were, uh, one, what kind of questions were going to come up, and two, uh, will the delegate body accept the treasurer's report? Uh, that was always a big concern of mine. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm glad to, to be up here today, and uh, I couldn't help but reflect upon my career here at MMPA, uh, and it really kind of goes back to my, my first annual meeting that I was here to share with you. It was back in uh, 1992. Uh, and at that point in time, uh, the general manager was Walt Washi, and I know Walt is here today, so welcome, Walt. It's great to see you. Um, for those of you that know Walt, or maybe if you don't know Walt, Walt was uh, an individual that uh, was, had uh, very strong family ties. And more particularly, Walt, uh, Walt always shared his family stories, mainly about his uncle Leroy. And, uh, and at, that, uh, at that particular meeting, uh, his uncle Leroy, uh, he told us a story, and, uh, and it's resonated with me for quite some time, and it was, it was that his uncle Leroy lived off of a dirt road, and uh, at the bottom of his driveway, uh, there was a low spot. And uh, in this low spot, uh, very often as people would travel down the road, uh, they would get stuck. So Uncle Leroy would bring uh, a team of horses, maybe similar to the ones that you see there, down to help uh, move them out and uh, get them unstuck. Uh, and uh, the uniqueness about Uncle Leroy is that uh, he would uh, charge the individual a dollar if he knew them, uh, two dollars if he didn't know them. And so uh, one particular day that Walt mentioned uh, about his Uncle Leroy was that uh, uh, a stranger got stuck and came to ask Uncle Leroy to be uh, pulled out, to help him pull him out. And uh, of course, Uncle Leroy did that. And upon doing so, the stranger asked Uncle Leroy, what, uh, uh, what do I owe you? And uh, his Uncle Leroy responded, uh, well, two dollars. And uh, the response there was uh, sort of taken back by the stranger. And he says, gee, uh, you must be making a killing do pulling people out day and night here. And his Uncle Leroy responded, no, just during the day. At night, I haul water down here. <laughs> I, I, I really thought that was a great story, and I, I certainly appreciated that. Uh, but being of the same family mind, uh, you know, I do have a, a strong roots to my family as well. Uh, I don't have an Uncle Leroy, but in fact, I do have a, uh, a godfather, Jimmy. Uh, n no, I really do have a godfather, Jimmy. <laughs> now. I'm not going to be able to share very many stories about my godfather, Jimmy, because if I did, uh, we'd have to be in protective custody together. <laughs> and so uh, I won't share those, uh, those uh, interesting events. Um, you know, at the start of my, uh, at start of uh, early on in my career, it was my intent to, uh, to uh, be a part of uh, the MMPA team, and I really wanted to focus on, uh, on uh, understanding the membership. And when I did that, um, I had an opportunity to experience uh, many things. And as you can see here, I wanted to promote the brand MMPA. Uh, and this was very early on in my career. Uh, as you can see, I didn't have very many gray hairs back then. But remember, I was from the finance department, and so I was trying to save us money by using employees to help promote uh, the clothing line that we were, we were selling on behalf of MMPA. This advertisement went out there in uh, our Milk Messenger, uh, and uh, and it was it was a it was a good opportunity to really see 
if we can help uh, stimulate the brand a little bit more, as well as have an opportunity to see if, uh, if we can actually reduce cost and, and, uh, and promote sales. Well, you know, being of a finance mind, uh, I had to find out, you know, how did we do? And as it turns out, uh, after I evaluated the numbers, I looked at what we were, the sales were prior to uh, this ad running, and then after or during, only to find out that sales had plummeted. <laughs> and after a short two months, we pulled the ad. Um, and uh, we decided to also retire that fashionable jean uh, shirt that I was wearing uh, because it, I did it no justice. You know, another th experience of mine was is that uh, this last year I had an opportunity to go out to the, uh, to the membership and, and have uh, several meetings uh, associated with the, uh, with the membership, the local meetings and the district meetings, and kind of ran across uh, many of you that uh, I have known and many of you that I just got introduced to. So it was, always, uh, it was always a great opportunity to share stories, to learn a little bit more about each and every one of you and particular operations. But I, I couldn't help but uh, think and, and kind of understand a little bit more as I was talking with folks that there was a particular interest about me and my family and my background. Uh, and uh, it, really, uh, it really resonated during the, the process. Uh, so at the end of the meeting season, uh, I was sitting down having supper with uh, uh, one of our member owners. And uh, he just looked to me and he said uh, rather quietly, Diglio, you're Italian. You know people, don't you? <laughs> well, you know, for those of you that do know me, I kind of can't let that go. So I turned to him and said, uh, yes, uh, I'm Italian, and yes, I know people. And then I said, what do you need done? <laughs> Unfortunately, the, the poor producer decided to get up and uh, walk away at that point, and uh, it wasn't my intent to scare any producers by any means, but uh, that was the case. Um, you know, back in 1992, I indicated that that was my first annual meeting being part of uh, MMPA. Uh, there was another significant event that took place in 1992. Uh, Ken Nobis uh, was a newly elected uh, director at large. And you can see Ken and how he looked back then, a little bit different than what he is today, but nonetheless, he's aged very gracefully. Um, you know, as I reflected upon that, I couldn't help but say, boy, it's kind of interesting where we've both landed. Now, true, it's taken um, one of us a little bit longer to develop, but Ken has done a great job as your president. <laughs> I hope I still do have a job after that one. <laughs> Uh, besides the, uh, besides the, uh, the jokes and the stories, I do want to uh, reflect back on back in 1992. Uh, uh, our fiscal year end of 1991 was being um, announced to the membership. And some key takeaways that uh, I noted. Uh, when we start with our total assets back then, we had $95 million worth of total assets. And today, Mark just reported $203 million. Our working capital back then was about $10 million, where today we're at $33 million. Uh, pounds of milk was uh, 2.93 billion pounds of milk, where today we're marketing 4.4 billion pounds of our member milk. Our fixed assets, this is the assets that help support the growth within the, the membership, amounted to roughly 25.3 million, and today we have just under 100 million, or $99 million worth of fixed assets. Our membership equity was just over 40 million, 41 million back in 1991, and today it sits roughly at uh, 63 million. So what do all of these numbers mean to you? Well, it should mean that your cooperative grew, but it grew very, very financially prudently. And I can, I, although I worked in the finance department for most of my career, I certainly can't take credit for that. John Dillon, who's also here with us today, was a, was a fixture of helping us establish the financing that we have in place today, and he certainly was a critical uh, person to help me understand the co-op structure, as well as the unique financing opportunities that member owner cooperatives have. So I thank John for that. Yes, we have debt today. Uh, that has allowed us to make the investments that we have uh, today, currently, 
but it also allows us to capitalize on presenting opportunities with a different portfolio and being becoming more diversified. While the majority of our products coming out of our manufacturing facilities do get impacted by commodity prices, we must also understand the fact that whether we like the price or not, it still creates value. And value is important. And when we extract that value, it is our intent to return it back to the member owners. You know, we live in a global economy. Markets are impacted by anything newsworthy. Later today, you're going to hear from Peter Vitaliano about where the markets were and where they're going to be uh, projected to be. I don't want to steal Peter's thunder, uh, so we're going to leave him up to him with the market analysis. I think it's fair to say that this past year, everybody was pleased with the milk prices. I mean, when you're talking an average $24 a hundredweight being received on the farm, uh, that makes people pretty happy. But in my travels and as I've talked to, to folks, certainly at this position, I've learned a lesson that was last year, what's this year about? And what I want to remind everybody is, is that we understand that. We understand that there's pressures. We understand that market conditions can uh, go up and down. And we are here for you. Uh, it is our intent to make certain that we extract the value that we possibly can from the markets when those markets exist. While I cannot share enough of, about the, uh, the different venues that we've been going through in terms of understanding the supply, the growth, as well as the opportunities that we might have in the future with uh, expansion efforts, I do want to assure you that we are focused on not just a, a short-term solution, but a long-term solution. And we will make a prudent decision when that opportunity comes up. As we talk about expansion, uh, we cannot forget the many steps that we've taken to this point in time. Uh, starting really with the, the reverse osmosis uh, uh, equipment that went in place down at Constantine. Uh, you know, this project started early on in July and finished in mid-December. That's truly amazing when you think about how quickly that machine got up and running. In addition to the noteworthy timing, it was also a testament on how the Constantine team came together in the spirit of trying to create an opportunity to benefit the whole membership. In the spirit of cooperation, uh, it's understanding the farmer needs uh, is of vital importance. And we, along with everybody else in the market, must understand that and continue to work down those, uh, down those efforts. On this screen, you'll see the names of the employees that are members of the Constantine team. Working on your behalf to achieve a desirable goal of adding one million pounds of extra capacity was, uh, was truly remarkable and a part of a strategy that we deployed as a team. This investment allows both organizations, both foremost and us, the opportunity to consolidate three loads of farm milk into one load of valuable solids. These employees worked diligently to make this a successful project and understood the importance of completing the project on a tight deadline. Led by Dave Davis, the plant manager, the Constantine team is a great example of how resources can come together and be successful when working collaboratively for the benefit of the member owners. The next major project that we've been talking about for some time is the Ovid Butter Churn Expansion. We've talked about the need to enhance our ability to capture market value, and when that exists in the market, we take advantage of those opportunities. By increasing the butter production capacity, we were able to produce more quality products that can service a growing market. The new, the new investment will produce over 17,000 pounds of butter an hour. That's about tripling our previous capacity. Having the ability to handle all of the cream that's separated at the Ovid facility allows us to limit our exposure to distressed pricing when, there's, when the market is saturated with milk. On this slide, you will see names of the Ovid team. You may not be familiar with these names, on the screen. However, it's important to know that they are instrumental part of the success of processing your milk as efficiently as possible. 
With the recent addition of Colt Johnson as the plant manager, along with the talented existing leadership that exists today, I can assure you that these folks have nothing but your best interest in mind. Sure, we have moments where, we pl where something might not go according to plan, but I have witnessed a team coming together to help make certain that whatever issues are out there get resolved as quickly as possible. You know, we're full all the time at our plants, and one small glitch, whether it be externally or internally created, can create havoc on a whole system. But when you put a team effort behind like this Ovid team has done, they can make the best out of a bad situation. They are dedicated in keeping the milk flowing through the plant and to help accommodate a member supply that seems to be endless. This is a picture of our SQF team. Uh, in addition to the plant projects that were being completed this past year, Amandeep Dillon, our Director of Quality, led the charge of certifying both plants under requirements of SQF Level 2. SQF, which stands for Safe Quality Foods, is an industry standard that many of our customers are seeking from their suppliers. Some of the reasonings behind SQF are listed here on this slide. While we believe that we have been meeting these criteria all along, we want to and believe in the understanding of com consumer confidence. Our customers are important to us, and we want to work with them to achieve a safe quality product on a consistent basis that eventually adds the value that we return back to you, the member owners. In addition to these accomplishments, our member representatives have been out there uh, busy in enrolling many of the members in the farm program. As Ken spoke of early, earlier today, Farmers Assuring Responsible Management is an industry program that helps promote the correct image of the farming community. Consumers, for the most part, are removed from the connection of the dairy farms. We know that. So it's important for us to guarantee to them that our farmers are treating the animals correctly. The video images of mistreatment of animals on farms can, be, can mislead consumers in thinking that it's a common place on farms today. While we realize these are rogue occurrences, these images can persist in the consumer's minds. So, we are putting pressure, so they are putting pressure on the retailers to guarantee that their milk is coming from places where animals are treated humanely. 91% of our milk supply is currently enrolled in the farm program, leaving us just over 300 farms remaining to comply. Along with the daily responsibilities of tending to our member needs, these individuals listed here on the screen are one of the reasons our members produce the great quality of milk we do. This team continues to help address the many challenges that industry is facing and is always willing to help produce and receive the most value possible based on individual operations. Whether it's farm visits, ordering of supplies, or just providing members communication on market conditions, these individuals add value far beyond what they get credit for. Because of efforts like this, MMPA continues to distinguish itself as a service-orientated cooperative. They are top-notch, and a true extension of the co-op in the field. As Ken mentioned earlier, this past year, we experienced some change that presented some different challenges. While change is expected by everybody who works for you, it can create an obstacle if it's, not, if it's received with opposition. I can stand before you today and attest that although some difficult decisions were made this past year, those working on your behalf didn't miss a beat. In addition to the employees presented earlier to you, these employees operate mostly out of the Novi office and conducted themselves in a manner that was unprecedented. Words can't describe the pride each member had in making a difficult situation seem like an ordinary day. That doesn't happen, and it should be it should help identify how committed your employees are to making this co-op as great as it is. 
I cannot possibly acknowledge all of the examples that demonstrated going beyond the call of duty. While tough decisions were made, we all believe we are more cohesive and engaged in moving this cooperative forward. We have spoken about the dramatic increase in production, and we continue to recognize that monthly. We aren't alone. Many of our industry partners have faced similar challenges that have led to some unfavorable conditions. As you know, the Class I market continues to be a hot topic of discussion. This particular market hasn't demonstrated the similar growth that other areas of dairy have. We cannot all service the Class I market or expect that the growing milk supply could be absorbed through this outlet. We must find a way to work together, to share equitably, and to provide the dairy producers within the area an opportunity to capture the value that's in the marketplace. I believe co-ops can and will work through challenges that we face today to develop a more unified approach in handling market conditions as they evolve. You know, this year was different than last. Prices have and continue to retract from the all-time highs that we just experienced, and we must prepare for that. As I've said earlier, high prices equal high, high volume equal high prices, high prices equal high volume. Uh, prices, when they get out of line, they put pressures on the marketplace, and we've experienced that. We are aware of the challenges, and we want to provide you as much value as possible, and we'll continue to do that. Whether it's services we provide, communication that we embrace, or the ability to market your milk effectively, we are working for you. Let's remember what a small group of dairy farmers set out to do back in 1916. That was to establish a reliable milk market. I believe we've accomplished that over the last 99 years, and we will continue to do that into the next century of existence. We will continue to investigate what moves we need to make to accommodate growth, and we will not just focus on short-term solutions. The cooperative model works, and it is a very, very, very valuable business structure that provides many opportunities that ordinary businesses just don't have. We must recognize that as an industry and focus on best how to collaborate together by addressing the landscape together rather than individually. There was a saying on Walt's uh, wall just outside of his office, and I believe it's, uh, it's very prudent to, to, to say that saying because I believe that we exist in that uh, environment today. It said, we cannot direct the wind, but we can adjust our sails. I believe we are adjusting our sails. Although we have many challenges in front of us, we will embrace the challenges and look forward to the next century uh, as we move this co-op forward. In closing, I wanted to thank Ken Nobis and the Board of Directors for having the confidence in me to help move the co-op into the next century of existence. I would also like to thank the entire employee team that has shown me the support and dedication needed through our transition and towards our goals. I look to earn a similar respect that I have for you, the dairy producers. I appreciate the tireless efforts you go through each and every day to help provide food that feeds the world. MMPA isn't just one person, it's a team of people who are aspired to accomplish a unified objective. That objective is to market our members' milk to the greatest advantage possible while being together towards tomorrow. I thank you and hope you enjoy the rest of the meeting today.